some of your memories of Has Harvey. Anybody notice the other t the other couple tapes? Different shirt. <laughs> I even washed. Okay. Go Talk ahead. about Harley Race a little bit. Uh, I met Harley when I first started in wrestling. Uh, immediately, uh, I took a liking to Harley, and I think he liked me. Harley and I are about the same age, even though he lies about his age all the time and tries to make people think he's 28. Um, but he was a unique type of guy. Uh, he started real young in wrestling. Uh, my understanding was uh, he was driving Happy Humphrey, great big 600-pound fat guy, uh, when he was when he was a young kid, you know, 16, 17, something like that. Um, but when I got to know Harley, as I say, he and I were pretty close to the same age. He was probably 24, 25, and he was teamed up with Larry Henning, who I've talked about in the other tapes. And uh, they made a hell of a combination, tag team combination. And Harley was uh, a tough, really a tough kind of guy, too. Didn't have the formal training as far as amateur wrestling is concerned. But he was the kind of guy, to me anyway, that didn't care who the hell you were. If you had a gun, he'd probably just tell you to shove it up your ass and go on about his business and not think another thing of it. Uh, but Harley was a... Uh, fancied himself. Apparently he raced cars for a while at one time and uh, earlier in his life. Well, hell, how old is he now? I'm not very old anyway, but a few years before I met him, supposedly he'd had some racing experience. And uh, I, I found out about it, uh, or I guess I heard about it anyway, but later on I found out that he still thought he was a race car driver. We used to go to uh, a town in uh, Illinois, Moline, Illinois. No, Peoria. Um, and it was about 350 or 75 miles, if I remember, and uh, don't hold me to it, it's 365 or whatever it might be, but it was a long haul. And we used to leave at uh, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning to make it to uh, Peoria by uh, 6.30, 7 o'clock. Well, that was kind of a draggy-ass way of doing things. and. Harley one day just said, uh, you going down to Peoria? And I said, yeah. Uh, he said, you want to ride with me? And I said, yeah, sure, fine. Now, again, like I said, at the beginning of my career, I rode with people on occasion. So I said, what time are we going? And he said, uh, uh, I'll meet you about 2.30. I never gave a thought to it. A little later on in the day, uh, it was early morning, working out or whatever. Maybe it was the next day, who knows. The guy said, you going to Peoria? I said, yeah. So said, what time are you leaving? And I said, 2.30. Uh, 2.30? He said, hell, we're, everybody's leaving at like 10 o'clock or 10.30, something like that. Who the hell you ride with? And I said, uh, Harley Race. I said, oh yeah, well, okay, gold even at 2.30, yeah, good luck. Well, I got in that car with Harley. Harley was driving a 65 or 6, I think, could be as late as 67 Chevrolet. Anyway, he had a rule when he drove. It was this. 85 miles an hour, that's it. 85 miles an hour. Uh, how about stops? 85 miles an hour. How about we get in the cities, 85 miles an hour. Well, yeah, naturally we slowed down in the cities and things like that, but at that time, on those roads, no interstate, understand. Forget the interstate, that didn't exist. There was highways, two lane all over the damn place. And any two lane highway, every 15 miles or 10 miles or sometimes even shorter, there was a little crappy town of 5,000 people or 10,000 people or, or maybe bigger, whatever it was. But as soon as he got out of that town, and he went pretty fast to the towns anyway, 85 miles an hour. If there was a stretch of road that was 50 miles long, 85 miles an hour. Well. That was all exciting and fun, and young like I was too. I, it was kind of exhilarating, and it was it was a it was a fun trip. But Harley made it even more interesting. We got stopped one time uh, in Iowa. Um, we were going like uh, from I don't know, say Omaha, maybe to uh, Davenport and that the Quad Cities or what the hell ever they call that mess down there. And uh, a guy behind us. I turn around and bloop, 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 
and the guy's got a light on his car. So Harley pulled over. Now we're out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, there's nothing but corn this way and corn that way, and that's it, corn. Uh, so Harley pulls over. The guy gets out, doesn't have a uniform on. There's no markings on his car. Harley says, eh, who the hell are you? Guy says, I'm making a citizen's arrest. Harley goes, what? Now, I'm like, I'm brand new. I don't know nothing about nothing. So I'm standing like a stale bottle of piss wondering what's going on. And Harley says, what? He says, you a cop? And the guy says, no. I just told you, I'm making a citizen's arrest. I want you to follow me in the town up here, you know, 10 or 15 miles, 10 miles, whatever it was. Harley says, what? He says, I told you, I'm not a cop. I'm making a citizen's arrest. Get in your car and follow me to the next town. I'm taking you to the magistrate or police chief or who the hell ever he's going to take us to. Harley looked at him again like this, and he and the guy are this far apart, standing on the edge of the road. There's a ditch there, and then there's a cornfield. Harley says, you're not a cop? And the guy says, no, how many times I got to tell you? And Harley took his goddamn, <laughs> put his fist back like this, punched the son of a bitch, knocked the guy down the damn ditch. Uh, first time, I said, wow, I'm going to jail for something. I don't even know what yet. And Harley says, get in the car. We got in the car. <laughs> we drove away. So, you know, what the hell was the guy thinking? But Harley was uh, uh, just a real off the wall. He was kidding the hell out of... Uh, I think the kid was Sonny Rogers, not a very big kid, a uh, little blonde haired kind of guy. And uh, we were at the uh, Columbus, Georgia, in the dressing room where they used to make TV. We were in the dressing room of a, of a uh, well, it used to be an old stable, and they converted it to their TV venue. Uh, Fred Ward and Ralph Freed. A hell of a Hell of a venue for, for uh, professional wrestling. Anyway, we were back in the dressing room. And uh, Sonny Rogers was telling some kind of BS story, whatever. And Harley had told him sometime before, maybe a week or two weeks before, whatever, that he was going to shoot the kid. Well, the kid starts talking, and I don't remember exactly what led up to it, but Harley pulls out a gun, pistol. And, the, and Harley was goofy enough, people had seen him do different things, or at least heard about him doing crazy things. And this, of course, now I've been in the business for a long time, or a longer time. And this is 1974, 76, something like that. 74, I think, maybe. So this Rogers kid, if that's what I'm thinking, and I think it's him, he gets wide-eyed like that, and Harley just says, I told you I was going to shoot you. Some of the conversation took place, and Harley leveled the gun. Well, the kid was sitting right across from him. And Harley pointed the gun at the kid and pulled the trigger. Bang! Bang! <laughs> the kid went up the wall. I mean, he just, just went up the wall. He just shot out of the damn... Uh, he was sitting on a bench. He just shot out of the damn bench and literally climbed, with no hands, climbed the doggone wall. He came back down, he sat there, and he slumped over. There's several people that thought, uh-oh, here we go again. This is uh, John Valentine shooting, or I mean, uh, Jay York shooting at John Valentine. Well, what had happened is Harley, <laughs> Harley was laughing. Uh, he'd used blanks, and apparently Wadding had hit Sonny in the body, in the chest somewhere, so he thought he really was shot, and he... <laughs> scared the shit out of him anyway. That was Harley. Harley was uh, Harley was unique. Uh, there's there's a zillion bunch of stories uh, of, of Harley and uh, uh, gosh, yeah. Scott, help me out. You have a race with Johnny Walker one time? Who? Have a race with oh, Johnny Walker? Yeah, well, uh, Harley again, like I said, thought he was a race car driver and apparently had done it. Of course, the other thing that he left out of it was that his first wife, I think it was his first wife, was killed in a car accident with him driving. I think that's the way it went. Uh, so he may have been a race car driver, but I wouldn't say he was, well, he might have been the best when he wasn't in an accident, but then again he might have gotten into an accident once in a while, so it didn't make him quite the best all the time. But anyway, uh, uh, 
Johnny Walker, wrestling number two, he used to drive a big old Oldsmobile, I think, and uh, whatever the hell year, in the, in the 60s, I think. And uh, we were going on a stretch of road that was just being built, Highway 16, going down to Savannah. We were coming back, as a matter of fact. I think we might have been on 75, coming uh, out of uh, Macon, Georgia. And uh, now it's two lanes, highway, regular highway, just like it is today. And uh, Johnny pulls up alongside. Harley was driving a... I think a 65 or 66, uh, what the hell is the car, um, oh, uh, a little sporty car, uh, real hot, real, real popular, not a, not a Corvette, uh, uh, made by Pontiac. Well, somebody knows what the hell I'm talking about. Trans Am, Trans Am, wasn't that made by Pontiac? Yeah. Whatever. And so John pulls up in his Oldsmobile, big, looked like a goddamn it, uh, ship, you know. And, uh, you know, he bumps a little bit. And we're probably going 80, uh, 90, I don't know how fast we were going. He wants to see what Harley can do. Where Harley's with this Trans Am, that damn thing, he just touched the gas. <clears throat> that damn car was 20 feet ahead of you. So, by the time we hit about 105, 110, that was top speed for John and that big-ass Oldsmobile that he had. And Harley, <laughs> he had all kinds of room left. The one time, well, he just blew by. He just went by John, that was the end of that. But at one time, coming on that 16 that I mentioned before, coming out of Savannah, the road wasn't completed. Uh, you know, stretches of it all over the damn place, but there were barriers, this, there, and, you know, all that kind of crap. And Harley took that car, and we did 140-some miles an hour on the odometer, 142 if I remember halfway right. And then the car went, started missing a little bit. I said, I was petrified. I, I didn't know what to hang on to because there was nothing to hang on to except the car, and the car wasn't going to make it if, if we got into an accident. I said, what the hell is that? I told Harley, I said, and then when he finally slowed down, he said, ah, damn it, this is this car. He says, you know, you got a little problem with the engine and something, you know, you got to get this fixed. 142 miles an hour is fast enough for me, you know. Uh, and I said to him, I said, you know, if this goddamn thing just hit a grasshopper, we'd be dead. Uh, but that was Harley. He couldn't give a shit one way or the other. He was just uh, goofy. He got chased by cops one time going down to Savannah. Uh, we went over, back then they used to have those cords over the highway. You know, uh, to and you know, cord here and ten feet away was another cord to measure the your the distant time it took you to hit the two cords, and they calculate the damn thing. Yeah, you went sixty-five miles an hour. Shit, sixty-five miles an hour. Told you, Harley always said eighty-five, eighty-five. By the time you know, you didn't couldn't even see the cords. I mean, <laughs> you could look over here, and here was a cop, and he just started coming up. But Harley's doing eighty-five. Well, hell, with that Trans Am, eighty-five was just Bottom speed, like I told you, could do 142. So we just, <laughs> we made it to the building in Savannah, parked the car, got in the building, just sat there. Well, we never found him. You know, he got away. <laughs> so anyway, Harley was a little bit, a little bit goofy. Were you ever in the car when he turned the lights out? At, at night? Oh, jeez. Same place. Uh, a kid that went as an Indian. Uh, little Bear? Exactly. Yeah, I was going to say his wife comes to the meetings. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Danny Lilber. He and Harley had known each other for years. Apparently, they're both in Kansas, Kansas City. But Harley would go up behind somebody. A lot of different guys did it, but Harley was good at it, too. Turn the lights out. Everybody's going 65, 70 miles an hour on the highway. Turn the lights out. Come up behind the car, one of the boys, and just touch that car and then hit the gas. Pretty soon you're pushing that car 80, 85, maybe 90. And the guy in the car, no control over everything. I mean, it's just, it's, it's the shits. It's scary as hell. And Harley just, that was the greatest damn fun. And a lot of guys did that. Dick Murdoch, Harley Race, uh, a lot of people. That was, that was a big thrill 
to have the guy in the car up ahead not, and you don't realize it right away. When they did it to me the first time, I wasn't even aware of it. I just, you know, you're sitting there, you've been driving all damn day long, you just got through wrestling and you're driving back, you want to get home or where the hell ever you're going. And you know, kind of ready to go to sleep and call it a day and you just got all you can do just to try to see where the hell the road is. The next thing you know, your car is going 90. You say, shit, what the hell is this all about? <laughs> and the guys in the back are laughing their asses off. Well, I think that resulted in a couple accidents on occasion, nothing uh, real serious that I'm aware of, but uh, yeah, it was exciting. Is there another story about Harley firing his gun at some fans that were chasing the two of you? Oh, yeah, yeah. He, 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 uh, we were chasing, uh, we were chasing uh, some people. Uh, had a deal where a guy came in, uh, I, that one I think started out, well, I'm not sure. Uh, my stories get all mingled, uh, mixed up anyway, but Harley, uh, a guy came into the dressing room, a fan, and Harley's taking a shower, I'm taking a shower, and I don't know who else was in there, but the guy sees Harley and wants to kick Harley's ass. And he wants me or whoever else was there, like I say, maybe it was Rene Goulet was there. He said, oh, yeah, Harley, no good son of a bitch. Help me kick his ass, Bob, and beat the hell out of him. Well, how smart was that guy? Harley knocked the guy on his ass, kicked him with his bare feet, and kept on kicking him all the way, and the guy was on his hands and knees, and Harley just kept on kicking him in the ass all the way out the doggone door. <laughs> and that kind of, you know, I guess the guy decided maybe that wasn't a very good idea, but what a stupid shit. And another time, uh, might have been then, I'm not even sure, some fans were giving him a, a hard time or whatever it might be in the cars, and he just leveled a gun outside the doggone window and he started firing. Well, of course, he said he fired over the damn car, but I don't know where the hell those damn bullets went, and uh, I'm, I'm sure he did go over the car. But even so, said, what the hell are you thinking? Well, Harley was just uh, crazy, and, and just... Well, just crazy enough to do just about anything, and as far as I know, he probably did do everything. Yeah, hell of a guy, hell of a guy. Was the story about the fan in the dressing room the same one about the fan in the shower?